Hello again. So let me just go on in James. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to him, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So, he goes on to say, But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him to righteousness. And that is false. Because you see, although it's good to do good works, and faith does produce works within us, to say that a man is justified by his works, basically is a lie. Because, and it's a contradiction to Scripture, the rest of the Scriptures, as I turn over to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Okay. Let's go to, uh, let's go back to chapter 3. Okay. Chapter 321. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by His grace, not by works, by His grace, through, redemption, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood. So blood covering us is His work on the cross. And by the way, there's no difference because no, this is the same way that Jews and Christians and, and Gentiles are saved. So God put forth Jesus as a replacement or, or in place of uh, to, to, to stand before God in judgment for us, to be received by... So we're, we're received Jesus' blood through faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time. By the way, when we're saved, when we believe on Jesus Christ, we're, all our sins are covered, and I can bring that out also. So that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So notice it says justified by faith. Faith is the justification factor. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ, in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting in our works? It's excluded. By what kind of law? By the law of works? Paul is making this argument. No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified, justified by faith apart from his works or works of the law, or works? Or is God the God of the Jews only? Because the Jews, basically, if you look at, at, at Paul, he's arguing with Jews, like James. And the Jews are, are basically thinking that the, they have to follow the law. It wasn't the case. Because the same Holy Spirit and the same justification through faith comes to the Jews and the Gentiles. Is he not the God of the Gentiles also? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Since God is one, he will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then overthrow the law by, his, by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. The law that was, was given by faith through Moses. What then shall we say was gained by Abraham our forefather according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, 
but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now Paul goes on to say, Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift. And this is why grace is a gift, but his due. So James is basically saying, by your works you will be saved. By you, by you carrying out your faith, the work of your faith is what saves you. And he's putting the cart before the horse because Paul is saying that it is not your works that save you, it's your faith that saves you. But yes, if you have faith, you will go ahead and do works accordingly because you believe. But James was equating it with salvation. He said, can, faith, can that faith save him? And yes, it can. We don't have to do a work to be saved, although we will do works because of faith. So, basically, he says now to the one who works, wages are counted as a gift, are not counted as a gift. When you work for something, you don't get a gift. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but trusts him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. See this? Just as David also speaks of the blessing, the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and those whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. So basically what James is telling you that you're still, you still have to uh, keep yourself from sin and follow the law in order to be justified. So, so this is clearly not a book about righteousness that comes from Jesus Christ. This is talking about a righteousness from you, from you following the law, being a doer of the word. So speak and, and act as those who are being judged under the law of liberty. Wait a minute, we're not judged anymore under Christ. Now this is James chapter 2. It says right here, if you really fulfill the royal law according to Scripture, we're not talking about uh, your fulfill. He says you fulfill the law. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. This is, this is James chapter 2 and verse 8. If you really fulfill the royal law according to the Scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And you're, you are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Again, under the law, okay, for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. And basically, this is another scripture that matches a scripture that was written against him because there was another scripture written that said, said that uh, if, you, if you trust in the law, you better follow the whole law because if you mess up on one point, you're condemned. So you better have faith in Jesus Christ. So this is another verse that's basically, I think, written in contradiction to another verse right here. So we're going to pick that one out. Do not commit adultery, he said, but do not murder. But if you commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have tra a transgressor of the law. Then it says, so speak and so act as those who are being judged under the law of liberty. What's the law of liberty? He's not talking about the law of Christ. He's talking about the law of liberty because Moses said that if you do not turn to the right left of the path, if you stay on the derrick and follow the laws, you will be blessed. But the fact is, is that nobody can follow the laws, and that was the contention of Peter and Paul. So this book is in error. 